California was for many years a paradise for the middle class in this country. People move there from everywhere, but increasingly it's becoming an unlivable dystopia for normal people. Nowhere represents that better than the city of San Francisco. Car break-ins are surging there, but arrests are rare and police seem unable or even unwilling to protect the public. Recently, the show Inside Edition tried to investigate the crime wave, and here's what happened. These Bonnie and Clyde wannabes stroll up and peer inside our car. He tries to bust out the front window with the glass puncher, but it doesn't break. So he goes for the back window and... There he goes, he just broke in. First, he grabs the purse and tosses it to his female accomplice. He reaches back in and struggles to pull out our big speaker. Time to activate our GPS unit. The chase is on. He went down there. We finally catch up to them at this subway entrance. I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. You've got my speaker right there. You just broke into our car. What? We've got it on camera. You're going to want to give that back. I'm just going to call my mother. You should call your mother. That is an awesome mic. Can I talk to your mom? He leaves it on the ground and walks off. We got our speaker back. Now we have to find the girl. The purse is in this area. Some, here it is. Purse is in the trash can. Unbelievably, when we were inside conducting the interview, thieves came out here and they broke into our crew truck. They stole thousands of dollars worth of our equipment. So we actually got hit twice in one day. Unbelievable. Joe Aliota Veronese is a candidate for the DA of San Francisco and he joins us tonight. So Joe, obviously you're from there, but our viewers may not know yes. that these crimes took place not in some obscure, tough neighborhood on the periphery, but in one of the most famous squares in the city of San Francisco in broad daylight. How does this happen? Right. Why does nobody stop it? Well, here, we have we had 31,000 last year, and that was reported, which means it's probably closer to 40, 45,000, which is 100 a day. So it's not unusual in San Francisco that this happens. What they do is they come from out of town because they know they're not going to be prosecuted. Um, and then they also target areas such as the, the Painted Ladies here and other, other areas like North Beach and Pier 39, where they hit tourists because tourists won't stick around for the prosecution. Uh, it makes it harder on the prosecutors to actually... Uh, uh, to convict. But even when you've got cases like this, which is absolutely horrible, it's not, it's not uncommon. We shouldn't be having people taking, uh, taking law enforcement into their own hands. What this lady did was extremely dangerous. Uh, and in the circumstance of the individuals that broke whoa, whoa, into her car mean, and about jumped the into another car. Yeah, that's but wait, right. the cops that's aren't right. doing anything. The city's not doing anything. Why shouldn't people take well, the law into their own hands? If the state won't uphold the law, why shouldn't citizens? Well, the police department, the fire, the police department, the uh, prosecutor's office, they are the ones that should be doing this. Uh, and the problem is, in the instance, let me give you an example, the instance where the individuals broke into her car and they jumped into another car, there are rules that the police commission here in San Francisco have set where the police department cannot chase once they get into a car. So you could break into a place in San Francisco and as soon as you get into a vehicle, if it's a property crime, the police department is ordered not to chase you. So who There's are these some, laws? You know, but I'm confused. The, typically, the laws in a city or a state or a country are written to protect normal people, taxpayers, people with families, people who aren't bothering anybody. These laws all seem to be written to help criminals. Why is that? Well, that particular law was written to prevent, uh, you know, high-speed chases in, in high urban areas. But, um, but really, what we should be doing in San Francisco is taking a look at laws that were well intended, and and changing them to make sure that they are effective. And and the problem in San Francisco, and this is this is true throughout the country, is that when you attack a progressive. Uh, law, you're you're attacking. It's seen as, as attacking progressive, as opposed to being, you know, a leader and taking a leadership position. Um, and that's the real problem: is that when we see faults in our ideal, our progressive ideals, we should be correcting them. We should be going back and saying this isn't making sense. It's not working. Put some metrics behind it. Trying to find out what the success metrics are. But so is and anybody then doing that? Like those laws, but we're not doing that. Okay. So, but what do the supervisors no. of the city of San Francisco think when they get on BART and there's like a pack Cast out junkie and someone shooting up and a pile of human feces and a mugger, do they think, boy, this is working really well, I'm doing a good job? Like, what do they think? 
Well, I think what they're thinking is, and this is another problem, is, well, okay, our homeless department isn't working well, so let's give them more money. Or our Department of Health isn't working well, so let's give them more money. And, and we're building these large institutions that aren't really based on any kind of success metrics. We should not be stepping over those individuals in BART stations. And in fact, I have proposed, even at the fire department, that we do something about the mental health emergencies that are happening on our street. Yeah. Because if you call 911 and you have a broken arm or, or you've been shot, we'll show up to help you with that emergency. But if you're having a mental health emergency, we currently don't have a protocol to deal with that. And but we can really I ask need really quick, to be addressing have, that I don't problem. know if you've got kids, but you'll notice when you have kids, if you don't put up with something, you get less one. of it. Okay, then you'll find out when he gets older, cities that put up with this kind of nonsense get a lot of it. Cities that don't put up with it don't get any of it. Has that occurred? Right. Well, here's the thing is that Gavin Newsom, who's running for governor, uh, recently said and was attacked for it. He said we shouldn't be spending more money on homelessness in San Francisco. This is a regional problem. And this is a man that for years worked really hard on the homeless problem, for years, and actually put a dent in it. He's saying no more money for homelessness, and he's absolutely right about that it. That guy, take that a look guy, at these institutions. I'm sorry. I, I know, you can't, you you're can not allowed him. to plug that guy. No, I'm serious. Look at the city he left you behind. Can, you you can can't say him, Gavin Newsom you, was a We was worked success. really hard with Gavin Newsom yeah. on the homeless problem in San Francisco. <laughs> but he's right about yeah. this one. This is All a right, regional well, he problem. He is right on that one. This thing. is a regional Th problem. Joe, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. All right.